Okay, numbers 20 and 21 in the version A, module four, rap quiz, pose some problems for at least one team, maybe, maybe more than that. Um, we need the practice doing these games. So the market for bagels contains two firms, Bagel World and Bagels R Us. The owners of the two firms decide to fix the price of bagels. The table below shows how each firm's profit in dollars depends on whether they abide by the agreement or cheat on the agreement. Um, so here we have, it looks to me like it's probably a prisoner's dilemma. Let's just see. Notice that from Bagels R Us point of view, if it thinks Bagel World is going to cheat, Bagels R Us's best play is to cheat too. And likewise, if it thinks Bagels R Us thinks Bagel World is going to abide by the agreement, notice that Bagels R Us's best play is to cheat as well. So um, if Bagel World's dominant strategy is the same, we've got a prisoner's dilemma. So let's just look at it from the point of view of Bagel World. Um, if Bagel World thinks Bagels R Us is going to cheat, Bagel World's best play is to cheat. Notice that 40 for Bagel World is better than zero for Bagel World. If, on the other hand, Bagel World thinks Bagels R Us is going to abide, then Bagel World's best play is, again, to cheat. 80 is better than 45. So we've got this classic prisoner's dilemma. Both have dominant strategies to cheat in a single shot game. That is where they're not going to play at next period. Um, the, the Nash equilibrium is where they both cheat. So um, for Bagel World, um, cheating on the agreement is a dominant strategy. By the way, just to look ahead a bit, the in a repeated game, games that are repeated, so, you know, Boeing and Airbus, they're, they're not just competing this term, they're gonna compete next quarter and the quarter after that and the quarter after that. And in a repeated game, if I'm gonna cheat on an agreement this period, I know you're gonna cheat on the agreement next period. It's called tit for tat strategy. And, and there, I have some gains from cheating this period, but I'm probably going to lose the profits next period and the period after that, etc. So the the lost future earnings is going to be uh, is going to discipline me against cheating. And we find that in repeated games, uh, collusion is much more likely as long as the end of the game isn't known for sure. And I'll explain that in class. Uh, we have one more game. Uh, this is a different sort of a game. This is called a matching game. And here, um, players have their preferences over seeing a comedy or a documentary, but they really want to be together. Um, we see Lee likes um, documentaries uh, better than comedies. Jordan likes comedies better than documentaries, but they both would rather be together than alone in their preferred um, movie. So um, this is, again, called a matching game. Uh, let's suppose you're trying to do uh, decide what to do on a Friday. Jordan wants to see a comedy. Lee would prefer to see a documentary. One documentary and one comedy are showing at the local cinema. Payoffs received are in the payoff matrix. Both Jordan and Lee know the information contained in the play payoff matrix. They purchase their tickets simultaneously, ignorant of the other cho other's choice. So this is, a, this is a bit of a problem. It's hard to imagine in the cell phone age that this would happen. But um, anyway, let's just go with it for a moment. Um, so here, notice we've got two Nash equilibria just before we start. Um, notice that both being at a comedy, if Lee is at a comedy, does Jordan want to go over to the documentary? No, because five is better than one. Does Lee want to skip out of the comedy and go over to the documentary? No, because three from going to the comedy is better than the two from the documentary. So this is a Nash equilibrium. And it turns out there's another one in, in these ma matching game. There are typically two Nash equilibria if there's a two by two game. Um, so here, here we have, a, you know, a very different game than we've seen before with two Nash equilibria. Which of the statements is true? For Lee, seeing a comedy is a dominant strategy. Nope, nope. Notice that um, Lee doesn't have a dominant strategy. Ne neither does Jordan. Their best move depends on what the other is doing. If the other changes their move, their best, the, the one player's best move changes. 
So, for Lee, seeing a comedy as a dominant strategy, nope. For Lee, seeing a documentary as a, no, that's not true either. Lee does not have a dominant strategy. Okay, well, that's true. And then finally, Lee's dominant strategy depends on Jordan. No, if, if his strategy depended on Jordan's choice, it wouldn't be a dominant strategy. So C is the only um, right answer. Th this is a definition, you, you know, a little bit of practice with this stuff, you guys are gonna be awesome. Um, so so um, uh, you know, missing a rap quiz uh, question isn't, isn't a big deal. If we get to the end of the module and you're still not clear on these concepts, then, then that turns out to be a big deal. But um, all right, onward.